Why would I talk about public washrooms? There's spaces for people to just go in and get out. So what's the big deal? Well, issues of equity, respect, and dignity are involved. The current design of the public washrooms is inadequate in satisfying individuals' basic human needs. These individuals include women, men, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer, LGBTQ individuals, family and parents with infants and children, and people of different religious and cultural backgrounds. My research explores recommendation in designing public washrooms to accommodate these people's needs. There are always long lineups outside women's washrooms for the inadequate amount of toilet stalls. Studies even show that women take triple the time to use washrooms. Future design should at least double the number of toilet stalls and spaces for women. Movable walls can also be installed so as to adjust the number of toilets provided according to the gender ratio at particular occasions. There are certain safety issues around men's washroom. Men's back is exposed to the entrance while urinating, which makes them unaware of the potential dangers from their back. By installing mirrors on the walls above urinals, men could check their back during urination. Besides, men's washrooms is known for being places of crime, drug trafficking, and drug use. Measures should be taken to cut down these potential crimes. LGBTQ individuals find it's challenging to locate a gender-neutral bathroom for their safe use. As many of our current public washrooms are gender-segregated spaces, that is either for men or for women. Their gender is questioned as soon as they enter these spaces. There's even violence towards them. Gender-neutral bathrooms should be included. A security office should also be located next to the public washrooms to provide security at all times. Spaces for caretakers of the opposite sex are insufficient. Mothers may need to assist their sons to go to the bathroom, so do fathers with their daughters. Family-friendly washrooms should be built, as well as clean infant chains and private breastfeeding areas. As our city is a multicultural community, it is necessary to understand the needs and preferences of users of different cultural backgrounds. Do they need any instructions to use a toilet, or do they prefer using a squat toilet? How could these preferences be accommodated while maintaining a hygienic and warm welcoming environment? I'd like to urge all of you to see public washrooms and everyday life spaces as important elements because we can try to reimagine these spaces as inclusive spaces to provide people with respect and dignity. Thank you. Also, we'd like to welcome any questions that the audience might have for Vanessa after her presentation. Are there any questions? Have you seen any good examples of bathroom design in public spaces in Vancouver? Yes, I'd love to mention that. It's in Oak Ridge Mall. The design is amazing. They have <laughs> men's washroom, women's washroom, family washrooms, mm. as well as a security office right next to a women's washroom. That was, that was, I was really glad to see that example in Oak Ridge Mall. And I would encourage you to visit Oak Ridge Mall <laughs> just for the public washroom. I'm going to go now. <laughs> Any other questions? How many public washrooms are there still in Vancouver? Like there used to be a whole bunch around Main Street, and uh, but they've been closing because of the crime and the drug stuff. Um, Regarding the automatic yeah, like washrooms. how many how many public washrooms are there that are like in a mall or? There, like there used to be street bathrooms, mm -hmm. and they're all disappearing. Yeah, they were worried about that homeless people would yeah. stay inside, yeah. and then they would occupy that space, which ultimately would not be a public washroom for public use. So yeah. the government had been shutting down that. Yeah. But um, the nice thing about they do in the automatic public washroom is actually they try to use it for just 20 seconds, so that the door would automatically open. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to read that in 20 wow. seconds. But it's a way, and it's a way to protect people, or, like to prevent people from staying inside the room. Whoa. Well, but whether it's the 20 seconds is legitimate or not, I think a public discussion has to be made. I'm curious how the 20 seconds was determined. <laughs> <laughs> there was a study. <laughs> I'm sure there was. It didn't include this. <laughs> well,
average or maximum limit. <laughs> Sorry? Well, if it's an average or a maximum time, it would have to be a maximum time. Yeah, yeah the maximum time is yeah. uh, 20 minutes. Okay. It has to be yeah. the yeah. 20 minutes. Did I say 20 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said 20 seconds. <laughs> Sorry, that was 